as revolution spread throughout Europe in the late 18th century. Governor J. Van Plettenberg became concerned that it would spread to the Cape. Hence, the first so-called imperial unit, the Corps van Panderen was formed by the Dutch in 1793. It consisted of Khoisan, and mixed race colored men under white officers, and consisted of approximately 200 soldiers, only to be disbanded in 1796, when the threat of revolution at the Cape died down. The unit was reformed, and then in 1801 it was incorporated into the Cape Regiment formed by the British. Many changes occurred, when the British returned to permanently control the Cape. They formed the Cape Regiment in 1806, and in 1809 the Caledon Code was passed, in order to restrict the movement of free people of color. At this time many Khoi had lost their land, and were forced to work on settler farms. According to the Code, all Khoi had to have a fixed residence, and required a pass from the farmer they worked for. Hence, farmers could withhold wages from people now classified colored. In 1812 the Apprenticeship of Servants Act was introduced and allowed for the apprenticeship and employment without pay of free colored children. At this point Khoi society had changed dramatically. Though they fought and won many wars against the colonialists, in the long run the British and Dutch forces proved to be too strong. However, the British, Boer, and some Khoi forces fighting on behalf of the colonialists, did not have it all their way. The rebel Khoi managed to join forces with the Kosa and Sun forces, and managed to fight back. In one of the battles, Andres de Kenstrom was killed, and Chief David Steeman was said to be responsible. This turned him into a formidable foe. In January 1812 Steeman's ally Chungla was killed, and Steeman then aligned with Ndlamba Varabayama Kosa, and, retreated across the Fish River. In 1828, Ordinance 50, led by Dr. John Philip, who worked to end discrimination against indigenous South Africans, prohibited British settlers from buying slaves. Unfortunately, statistics no longer recognized Cape people of color as separate groups of hot and tot buster, slaves, prized slaves and free blacks, all were now colored. Thus, the Corps lost not only their land, culture, and language, but also their identity. Legislative controls regulated every aspect of the lives of colored people. This would be the start of a long period of political struggle for people of color. Wine farms developed in the Cape and gave rise to a pernicious system known as the DOP system. Farmers paid their farm workers in alcohol, called DOPs. As the Griqua people migrated out of the Cape Colony, in the early 19th century they were followed and pushed off their own farms by the Boers, who would later adopt the moniker, Afrikaners. In 1835 the Boers traveled from the Cape northward into the interior, to escape the British colonial administration. This prompted the establishment of the independent so-called Afrikaner farms and the establishment of the DOP system, which would last into the 21st century. For example, in the 1980s, Jan Boland Kutsi, a well-known rugby player demonstrated the Afrikaner belief that farm laborers are inferior by stating, colored laborers didn't know what was good for them, and, only wanted their daily dop. Another, indication of this belief came from Merrick D. Clerk, in 1983. She came under fire for calling coloreds a negative group and non-persons. Ironically, her husband, President F. W. D. Clerk's slave and coy ancestry were common knowledge at this time. In addition, one of her sons would later father a child with a colored woman. As recent as 2009, South Africa was confronted with it again. It was reported that at least two farms paid their workers with alcohol. These negative stereotypes haunted the colored community even after apartheid. Other blacks regurgitated these same stereotypes in public. For example, in 2004, Blackman Ngororo, a Zimbabwean national and media advisor to then Cape Town Mayor, Norma Njim Ferkito, stated that colored people are beggars, homeless and drunk on cheap wine, and that Africans are superior. In 2011, former media personality, Cooley Roberts, gave a seemingly backhanded compliment to colored women. First, she writes about her envy of colored women's light skin and silky hair. 
Later in the article she writes about how her black friend convinced her to be proudly black, instead of wishing she was colored, because coloreds are nuts, because they drink, black label beer and smoke like chimneys. Her article prompted, prominent coloreds like, Fee Will Hafferji to call for her firing. These stereotypes are still common on television and social media. Sadly, some colored people playing to this narrative, not fully understanding the history and impact it has on the community. The DOP system was created by boss to control farm workers, who are still of majority co-ancestry. The DOP system supplied farmers with a supply of consistent cheap labor. Some farms even provided wine five times a day causing long-term developmental issues, like fetal alcohol syndrome, alcoholism, domestic violence and poverty. As planned, this became a generational curse, as generations of people fell victim to low-paying farm work and alcoholism. By 1817, there were two military units, the Cape Cavalry and the Cape Light Infantry, made up mostly of coy and mixed-race colored people. Before World War II, in 1945, this battalion had gone through many changes and the National Party made the Cape Colored Corps a full part of the South African Defense Force, in an attempt to divide Bantus and Coloreds. Starting in 1899, and lasting until 1902, the Anglo-Boer Wars broke out. Many Boers were wiped out, left starving and disadvantaged in many other ways. These are some of the factors that led to apartheid. In 1948, under the Dutch immigrant, Prime Minister, Hendrik Vervoed, apartheid became more mainstream. Coloreds actively fought against it, and groups like the African Political Organization, established in 1902, were exclusively coloured. Its leader Dr. Abdullah Abdurrahman, rallied coloured political efforts for many years. Coloured members were elected to Cape Town's municipal authority, including, Abdurrahman. Unfortunately, in 1930 they were restricted to electing white representatives. This resulted in frequent voting boycotts and protests, which may have contributed to the victory of the National Party in 1948. Under apartheid, coloreds were divided into various subgroups, namely Cape Coloreds, Cape Malays, and other coloreds. Indian and Chinese South Africans were also classified colored, and later Indians and Chinese received their own designationization. This designation elevated their social position to a level above coloreds, but below whites. If a colored person was rich enough and light enough, he or she could be reclassified white. Many passed for white, which tore families apart. One such case was that of Sandra Lolling who was born to white parents, because she was darker skinned, with coarser hair than her family members, she was reclassified colored. She endured many hardships, because of the way she looked. Another case, was Afrikaans singer Randall Wickham and his family. After his death it was revealed that Randall was colored. His parents hid, his darker skinned brother Winston from the public. Skin color was important to the apartheid government. It could determine your social position. Some coloreds were as light or lighter than whites. And some blacks, due to koi and sun ancestry were as light or lighter than coloreds. Hence, hair texture and facial features became even more important in determining race than skin color. One of these tests was the pencil test. It involved sliding a pencil, pen, or comb into a person's hair. If the pencil fell out, the person passed, and was considered white. If it stuck, the person was classified colored. Alternatively, if a black person wished to be reclassified colored, the applicant was asked to put a pencil in their hair and shake their head. If the pencil fell out, the person could be reclassified. If not, they remained black. The logic behind this was, the kinkier the hair, the thicker the lips, and broader the nose was, the more African ancestry the applicant had. I've heard that in the South Africa of today, you can be classified as colored simply by looking colored. Is this in point of fact true? When the Department of, uh, of Census started reclassifying people, they all people of the trams in the mornings out of the bus queues and took them up to the native commissioner's office. And some of the tests applied 
to tell a man that he was not coloured, was trying to pass a comb through his hair, and the comb stuck, he was told you are... Um, other people whose noses were a bit flat were told uh, you're not a coloured. 1966, District 6, was declared a whites-only area. From 1968, over 60,000 people were forcibly moved to the Cape Flats. Coloureds in other parts of the country were also moved from more desirable areas. Often, their houses were taken away, and these areas became white-only areas. Other areas coloureds were forced to leave included Constantia, Claremont, Simons Town and Stellenbosch. Once in these areas many coloureds were susceptible to gangsterism, drug abuse and communicable diseases, due to cramped living conditions. Even though people were negatively affected, and fell victim to many of the issues, that plagued the community, many also worked to improve their communities. Today, people are free to live wherever they can afford. As a result, some coloureds have been able to move back to more affluent areas, like Constantia, Claremont and Simons Town. Similarly, other black people have been moving into former colored only areas, and attending former colored schools. Coloreds and Bantus also received inferior education, called Bantu education. Their schools usually only went to grade 10, after which these children had to either get menial jobs, or, if they had enough money, could go on to finish grade 12, and on to university. Usually coloreds were accepted into UWC as that was the university allocated to them. During apartheid, many coloreds like Sissy Gall, Harold Cressy, James Laguma, Dulcy September and Ashley Creel fought the system. After apartheid ended, many coloreds in the Western Cape voted for the majority white National Party instead of for the popular African National Congress. This was in part due to fear tactics used by the apartheid government against the ANC. However, the ANC had control of the Western Cape from 1998 until 2006, when the DA regained control of the council. Hence, the Democratic Alliance won considerable colored support. Colored people supported and were members of the African National Congress before, during, and after apartheid. In 1994, Trevor Manuel was appointed by President Nelson Mandela as Minister of Trade and eventually became the first black finance minister of South Africa. The World Economic Forum selected Manuel as a global leader for tomorrow in 1994, and he has received numerous international awards and recognition for his accomplishments. South Africa reported its first budget surplus in 2007, under Manuel, and he increased spending for education, housing and sanitation. Coloreds have been the recipient of much hate over the years, but yet the community remains vibrant and rich in culture and tradition.